Hello there, and uh, welcome to a little quick run-through on the new Cam Studio Recorder. Uh, now in version 2.7. And uh, it's repaired a whole bunch of bugs and um, made some things that were settings issues where they're already preset so that you don't have to be worrying about them. The old uh, one pixel over issue with the regions it used to keep swapping its uh, problem location between fixed region or window or full screen uh, making it so you would get an error using any MPEG-4 type of encoder uh, or codec like XVID or DivX or any of those. Now that's been solved so that what you put into fixed region is indeed what you actually record. Okay and uh, used to was adding a, a pixel to 2.6 C. It worked fine in 2.6 B, but it didn't work, it broke in the window. So if you used size it to uh, create a, a certain size window that you were recording and recording window, then uh, you had to add a, subtract a pixel from it because it was adding a pixel. Anyway, all that's immaterial now because it doesn't plague us anymore, it's all been fixed. Another big deal that's been fixed is that in the video options now, it automatically snaps to the uh, correct settings here for capture frames every and playback rate so that the two when multiplied will always sum to a thousand when you have the auto adjust checked and the lock capture and playback rates checked, which you should leave checked, it's checked by default. But as you can see, if I move through it stops at play, at numbers that multiply to a thousand, okay? And um, including the real, real low uh, eight and 125. And um, so now that that's set, you won't have to worry about inadvertently setting it to odd numbers since the Cam Studio doesn't have a way of rounding off or putting in decimal points for the uh, playback rate. So you couldn't use 30 frames a second because there was no way of putting a decimal point in the capture frames every in the playback rate. So 30 would have required a 33.33 in here in order to, for the two multiplied to become a thousand. So that was broken. Now you can't even choose that without unchecking this. And I recommend you don't because your audio will drift out of synchronization. And also, as you see, we when it came up, uh, it had a um, it had a default value already in there of 50 and 20, which is a good average value. It's not super smooth. Um, you can increase the uh, rate to 25, say, or for a playback rate, or even 40 or 50 if you're recording something with a lot of uh, motion in it and you want smoother action. And um, you can select your DivX, or I mean your XVID, your DivX. Now all of the codecs that you've got installed will make an appearance in the list. Make sure that they're 32-bit uh, codecs when you download them because Cam Studio is a 32-bit program and needs 32-bit codecs even if you've got a 64-bit machine. Uh, in the XVID codec, if when I select that, let's just quickly show you under configure. Right, right now I have the the profile selected for 720. If I was doing a full screen, in my case, I would pick 1080 here. Okay. Um, I always use the maximum quality, a single pass for everything I've done. Uh, one nice trick for people needing smoother video is to uncheck this B BOPs and you may get smoother video for doing game recordings and stuff like that. Okay. So um, that's the big deal there. Also in other options, if you're getting a screen come up, a window come up, make sure this is unchecked, display encoding status, okay? All right, so there's all your details for getting it running. Now let's go at the, look at the uh, audio settings. Usually you wanna record audio from microphone. Now if you wanted to record audio from speakers, this setting, this setting here where it says record audio from speakers may work on your machine, but most likely it won't. It uses old hooks 
and hardware hooks that are left over from the old XP days, though some hardware still utilizes these hooks. And so once in a while we run into a modern computer that this will work. Well, you can try it, but most people need to use stereo mix in order to record the uh, system audio. So you would select record audio for microphone and then under audio options, audio options for microphone, you would make sure that you have selected stereo mix, okay, as your input source. And then you, um, what I use, you know, would usually be stereo. You can usually use uh, what they want. 44.1 stereo 16 bit is what YouTube prefers. So if you're just going right out the door with stereo, use that. Uh, for one microphone, I usually record using the mono setting. Uh, but that's another issue. It's a way of using, listening to the stereo mix and sending it to your mic settings. Anyway, it is sending your mic settings to the stereo mix. I have a video on YouTube about that. Um, if you use PCM and have the 44.1 16-bit or the um, stereo or the mono, that's the same thing as use MCI recording. Well, if you if you have it set to stereo, if uh, if you're using want the mono, make sure it's unchecked. But basically, all this does use MCI. You set it to what the system settings are. Okay. Now let's just take a look though at some system settings for a um, for a Windows 7 setup, and this applies to Vista 2. As you see, I have stereo mix showing here. If I wanted to get my audio from the system, well, first of all, I would right click on this empty background and make sure show disabled and show disconnected are both visible. And then if I have stereo mix available, it would show up here. I would then uh, right click on it and set it as the default device, okay? Which I can't do now because I'm actually recording. Um, then when I'm inside of there, I can send it to my speakers by saying listen to this device so that if my if I'm not able to hear it through the speakers because I've sent the signal there I can just send it by listening to this and send it out to my uh, my speakers all right so if you run into that problem you can do that there we go and uh, so that's the big deal on there. Make sure your stereo mix is set up. There's other videos that go deeper into how to use stereo mix. But that's how you make it available by uh, making that setting as the default. And uh, then uh, you can hear it uh, in your recording, whatever the system sounds are. You'll see another re recording that I've made here for how to include the microphone along with the system sounds. Now, all the usual settings are still there. You can enable auto pan, which makes the uh, cursor follow the, the action. And uh, so that I can pan around the screen. Or you can still set under region. I mean, um, yes, under region, fixed region, you can still set this right here drag corners to pan and that's what I just did to pan that little bit is I drag the corners okay uh, also remember when you're doing fixed region you can fix the top left corner uh, we started out this video with it set for me at 200 and 200 and that's where it wound up on my screen okay and uh, at a 1280 by 720 and the height, when you see 720p or 1080p, that's the height of the video. And then it uses the 69 uh, ratio to compute what the width is. So 720 is always 1280 wide, and the 1080 is 19, oh, now I forgot, 1920 or something like that. Okay. So, all right, so there you go. There's some settings. Uh, all the other tools work the same, but we have these major um, glitches that have been fixed. And the the biggest one, the most important one, is that now the settings for the capture frames every uh, and everything are, when you use the auto adjust, the slider will automatically compute the 
settings inside of here to be uh, when you multiply them they come to a thousand which equals one second which is what you have to have now then you uncheck this if you want to set a different keyframes we have it set to a hundred now I actually usually do my videos with it set to 200 okay and uh, but that's because I also use uh, 110 I do very slow um, we go this way that's my setting for use for doing most of my recordings so I used a faster default setting I used this one for this recording okay the 40 capture and playback rate of 25 all right well anyway I hope this has all been in very helpful for you as you can get up and running with uh, camp studio thanks to uh, this quick little review I'll do a real step-by-step -step right from the install level now if you want to go you know in a future video that'll probably do pretty soon there's been a few requests for it here's uh, where you get it you go to campstudio.org and scroll on down click this button and it will uh, bring up the installer you don't necessarily need the lossless video codec unless you really need archival quality I recommend using XVID or the X264 codec which is the hottest thing lately all right and um, it's a free program you should never have to pay for this so uh, if someone's charging you for it let us know because it's supposed to be free it's an open source program okay well that's it for this video and uh, so take care and let us know on the forum you can always go to the forum here campstudio.org slash forum and um, and ask a question it takes a bit you have to sign in first you have to um, uh, create it you have to register that's how we keep the spam out to a certain extent and uh, but I check just about every single day as is, does Nick Smith and we check in to make sure that uh, people aren't waiting in the queue we try to get them all approved as fast as possible and throw decline all the spam people and then you can ask questions and we'll definitely as you can see by the number of posts in just the sticky section which you should take a look at because a lot of questions that are common are already answered up in here uh, but we get constant uh, new posts and we always try to follow up and make sure people are have got it working before we ever let it go okay all right so I'll see you around the forum and uh, have a good time making recordings and spreading them all around the world thanks a lot